Welcome back to Mechanical Pros. Today we're going to be talking about how to do a proper flare uh, technique. Why would I flare and how do I flare and what, what do I need yep, to flare? Yep. Great yeah. question. So, so for us here at Mechanical Pros, we typically do all our reflaring on VRV indoor units. Outdoor units is all braze with your torches, but when you get inside the building and you get to your indoor units, there will be two flare nuts on each indoor units that you have to flare and you have to make a good flare to ensure that you can number one, pull your proper vacuum and have a good clean system. Number two, most importantly, or just as important, not have refrigerant leaks. You start the unit up, everything looks great. You get a call a week later, the whole yeah. building's down because of one bad flare on an indoor unit and you lose the whole refrigerant charge. So we're gonna to talk today about the, the, the simple practices of making a good flare. So the first and uh, piece we're gonna start with is our deburring tool. So very critical anytime you make a clean cut on a refrigerant pipe. See if we got one in here. Um, you'll always want to come through. You use your tubing cutters on this and it's going to leave a ridge on the inside of that. Believe it or not, that small ridge creates a restriction for the refrigerant flow. It'll also affect a good proper flare. So you always use a deburring tool, not the pocket knife. Not that I might have never done that in my career, but I've learned the wrong ways and the right ways, and we use a deburring tool. So after you make your cut with your tubing cutters, you'll use your deburring tool to clean that ridge out of there. You don't want to deburr too much and break down the wall thickness of your copper. You just want to make sure you get that little lip off from your, from your cut. The next step is going to be using the flaring block. We like using this Black Max CPS uh, flaring block. Always want to make sure you use a refrigerant flaring block. So there's different flaring blocks. There's a plumbing flaring block. That'll be a 33 degree angle. Don't use that. Refrigerant flaring block flares at a 45 degree angle. We have to have a 45 degree angle flaring block to make a good flare in a refrigeration system. So the next step is B, we would put the pipe into the flaring block and make a refrigerant flare. A pretty straightforward setup. You'll open your flaring block like so. Sorry, like so. You'll select whatever diameter pipe you might have. It'll go in the fitting like this. You'll tighten it down. You'll notice it's got this nice little slide stop on it. Back in the day, the rule of thumb was put a nickel on top of that and that gives you your right flare. Oh, maybe, maybe not. How old is that nickel, right? How long has it been kicking around on the street? This, this flaring stops. So just bring your pipe up until it makes contact with that stop. Okay. Lock your flaring block down, slide it over the pipe that you just connected, tighten her down like so, twist it. The nice thing about this flaring tool is it has a clutch, so you can't go too far with it. You'll only let you go so far and then the clutch will stop it from going any further. Loosen your flaring tool back up, pull your copper pipe back up. We'll use this as an example. Yeah. It's a nice three quarter inch pipe. So I've made a, a good flare and a bad flare. So we talked about our tools. We got our deburring tool. We've got our super nice Cadillac of flaring blocks. And it really is, it's a really good flaring block. But probably the most important tool on making a refrigerant flare is the cheapest tool in your tool bag. This $10 flare guide is a pass or no pass. So after you make your flares, you always want to run it through the flare guide. So here's my flare guide. What it's got is inside of each hole, there's a little lip of a rim it should go inside the hole and stop. It, should, it shouldn't pass through or it shouldn't stop on the top. So I've made a bad flare, right? Here I've made my three quarter flare. You'll notice it goes right through the flaring block. This will be a good flare. Goes in the block and seats and stops halfway. I know right there, I have made a good flare. One other important thing to remember before you make your flare, slide your flare nut down before you make the flare or you're gonna have to cut it back apart and put the nut back on. But after you've done this, you've got your flare nut on there. Next step is your torque wrenches. That's pretty depressing when you- It when does, you know I've done it. I don't wanna say how many times I've done it, but I've done it, everybody's done it. You get in a rush, you, you got your groove going, you're making good flares, and then you forget to put that flare nut on there. So always just make sure you slide your flare nut on first, make your flare, slide it back over, mate it up to the threaded end, and then you'll need a torque wrench. Every indoor unit on VRV systems has a different torque value depending on the size of the flare nut. The outcome ships with the IOM and every unit tells you what that flare should be. Daikin VRV has great apps. You can look it up that way. Make sure you torque your flare down correctly. Another good little tip, 
you can spray a little WD-40 on the inside of that or some POE or PVE oil, just a little dab to, to break that friction down. So when you tighten that flare down, you don't crack this little lip you've made. But that's it, you make a good flare, you lock it down with your torque wrench, now you're ready to pressure test and pull your vacuum and charge and have a successful yeah. system. Okay, very cool. So let me just recap real quick. Uh -huh. So we are flaring our refrigerant pipe for the connection, a mechanical connection to the indoor unit. That is correct. And where this refrigerant pipe is connecting to your air handler, you got a tremendous amount of pressure. Absolutely. Refrigerant uh, volume is, is flowing. It be over 500 PSI. Right. And so we need this thing, we need, we need uh, a smooth, clean contact, and it has to be the right diameter. That is correct. And by you following this process that you just showed us, by using a, a, a true uh, uh, flaring tool and testing it and uh, you know, doing some practice, you're gonna have much more consistent That's connections exactly without right. leaks. We get out there in the field, we're hot, it's tired, we're all on a deadline, things get busy, but trust me guys, spend the extra time, buy the right tools to do the job, get your method down and your procedure, do it the right way, your job's gonna go much faster in the end and you won't have callbacks. So how many, how many times do we find a leak at the flare connection on the indoor unit? I would say um, if I were to break it down on say we started 10 systems up, it could easily be 50%. Yeah. You know, again, it goes down to this. If these procedures are being followed, we won't find them, period. If they're just going out there, doing their best guess, throwing the nickel on an old flare block, looks good, you're gonna get leaks. You're gonna get leaks. So very important. Very cool. All right, there, there you have it. Um, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and we'll see you back on Mechanical Pros.